On the steep, rugged slopes of Alaska's Brooks Range, dull sheep scrape for sedges and grasses. Here, the sheep live at the northernmost limit of their range, tough enough to endure the long, dark Arctic winters. Despite being adapted for life in this extreme environment, doll sheep populations declined across Alaska in the early 1990s when winter weather was particularly severe. Alaska's national parks are home to as much as 35% of the world's population of doll sheep. Monitoring the abundance and distribution of doll sheep is a priority for the Arctic and Central Alaska inventory and monitoring networks. But given the immense size and remote nature of these parks, this is a daunting task. To meet this challenge, national park scientists are testing a new way to assess doll sheep populations. Doll sheep are chosen for both of those networks because they're iconic species for Alaska. They're also um, tied to specific habitats, so they're good indicators of that habitat, changes to that habitat, um, and relative to a lot of other ecological things that you can monitor, monitoring doll sheep are relatively simple. You can uh, count the number, you can count productivity, you can uh, look at the numbers of ewes or rams, there's all kinds of different environmental variables that you can get from doll sheep. So uh, for all those reasons, plus they're a hunted species, so there's some very direct, immediate management implications to doll sheep populations and how well they're doing in the Alaska parks. The Arctic Network is monitoring doll sheep in Gates of the Arctic National Park and Preserve, Noatak National Preserve, and Northern Kobuk Valley National Park. We're not able to survey these parks and preserves wall to wall. So we decided to test distance sampling, which has been used for wildlife and vegetation surveys for a long time. You know, the method as it is now has more or less been around since the 70s. What distance sampling allows you to do is um, sample the landscape. So it, that means um, just cover a portion of the landscape um, at various places instead of covering every square inch of ground. And so some of the one of the biggest advantages is that you're able to uh, complete a survey over a huge area like Gates of the Arctic um, for much less money. The primary assumption is that you are able to see all of the sheep that are very close to the airplane. Um, and what that allows you to do is then sample the landscape rather than covering um, all of it. As long as you have a known set point, then you can estimate the remaining portion of the sheep that you don't see. The basic concept of distance sampling is to travel along a line and look for doll sheep. When sheep are spotted, we measure the perpendicular distance from the flight line to the group. We know that sheep farther from the line are harder to see, but we use the distance measurements in statistical models to estimate the number of sheep that we missed. One of the advantages of using the models is that we can borrow data collected in the same way from other surveys to help estimate sheep abundance for small parks where we might not see a lot of sheep. For doing any of the survey work up in the Brooks Range, the big thing up there is trying to get out early in the morning so that you can beat the afternoon thermals that um, cr create turbulence and, and wind conditions in the mountains that make it um, make the transects unflyable. We're weathered in today, for instance, we've got to have the clouds above the mountains and relatively no wind, basically. And that's a tough combination. Uh, a lot of times we wait days for that. Uh, basically, we're on Mother Nature's schedule. So some days she opens her arms and lets us in, and other days she's clearly not in the mood for a visit. So uh, days like this, we stand by and we bide our time until she's ready. Most of the planes that we use on a lot of these surveys anyhow are Piper Super Cubs. Uh, they're, uh, this particular plane is a 1958, uh, so it's an older vintage, but they're, they are the utility machine of Alaska for a lot of this backcountry work. Uh, they're a high performance airplane, so they work good in the rocks and the uh, steep mountain terrain. They uh, have a high, they're a narrow airplane, so a lot of visibility out the sides. You're looking both left and right a lot of times, so it's all about visibility, and uh, they're just a good platform. A typical day, um, particularly if we're serving up in the Brooks Range, like up in Gates the Arctic, is you wake up at four in the morning, drink just a little bit of coffee, gather all of your gear, go out to the aircraft, um, and at this point, there's a number of different antennas 
attached to the crossbars within the aircraft, and those are um, all of the antennas for receiving GPS satellite points. The pilot and an observer basically decide to go on transecta. The observer records which direction is uphill. They're basically only observing uphill from the line that they're flying and they work together to look for sheep. When they do see a group of sheep, the pilot will leave the line, go and fly over the group of sheep um, and mark a point for where the group of sheep was originally seen. So the pilot's marking a point on his GPS or her GPS and the observer is also making a mark for that sheep group and recording information about it on the field computer at the same time. Uh, the observer also takes photos of the sheep groups, particularly large groups, so that we can improve um, count and composition accuracy. We have a transect that's generated on our GPS that shows the route, and they're 20 kilometer transects. And by transect, we're just talking about a line looks like a line of spaghetti, but it's a contour on a map at the same elevation or altitude. And so we will get on that, we fly 300 feet above that line, which puts us close in this vertical terrain, it puts us real close to the mountain. And we will fly on that line, only looking uphill to four sheep. And then when a group or a sheep is spotted, we will uh, break off transect, we will fly up, we will try to stay at a distance and get a picture of the sheep so we can do a composition of uh, age classes of the sheep. And then we will get close enough that we can tell if they're rams, if they're full curl, or if they're less than full curl. Alaska Native people have hunted doll sheep for thousands of years. Sheep are a particularly important food source for communities in the Brooks Range when caribou populations are low or when caribou migration routes change. We also have preserve units which both uh, local subsistence users as well as, as uh, more general sport hunting can occur in those areas. Uh, so these are park resources. Uh, and the, the take of them, uh, primarily adult males, can affect you know, the population levels as well as things like sheep behavior. So that's kind of the most immediate, immediate uh, use that the parks will make for this information on doll sheep. For these majestic alpine animals, many of Alaska's parks provide the vast and rugged habitat necessary for survival. However, these environments are changing in response to a rapidly changing climate. Doll sheep will likely be affected. For these reasons, the Arctic and Central Alaska networks will survey each of these parks every four years. These efforts will help wildlife managers to maintain healthy sheep populations while providing opportunities for harvest and for viewing sheep in the spectacular wild mountains where they live. Even though they're challenging, uh, they're, I love sheep and I love the area that they live in. Uh, these mountains and, and the habitat that these sheep live in, these are tough guys. They're, they're neat animals and they live in an environment year round that can be really tough and really rugged, but there's no more beautiful place on earth in my opinion. I mean, my office window there's days I look out my office window and uh, I'm sure nobody, no other office in the world can, could, could compare. It's the most scenery, beautiful scenery on earth.